Once just, you get the absolute value on the O, right? What's on the inside can be positive or negative. I just don't like the number that you're equating being negative because over there it was like you can't do that. What can't be negative though? The like the solution. Once you take the absolute value. So look at it this way, okay? The absolute value of 4 can equal 4, correct? So do you see how this x minus 3 could be a positive 4, right? In a similar way, the absolute value of negative 4 can equal 4, correct? So x minus 3 could equal a... It's not what's on the outside of the absolute value that I'm setting equal to positive or negative. It's the understanding that what's on the inside can be a positive or it can be a negative. That's what's really happening. Yes, because the fundamental idea is what's on the inside can be positive or negative, right? That's why we solve those equations to get just the absolute value on its own, and then I was able to split it up, okay? That's the fundamental idea here. Hey, what was the maximum value? Seven. Seven. You mean this seven right here where we stopped? Mm -hmm. What was the minimum value? Mm -hmm. You mean this value right here? Uh huh. So remember with the inequalities, I said solve it as an equation and then test around it. Have I gotten the endpoints? Yes. If I test a negative two, did it make the inequality true? Negative two did? No. No, so that's absolute value of negative five. Is that less than or equal to four? So I would say nope. Notice, is that a part of my solution set? Someone said an 8 at one point, is 8 a solution? No. no. So is that part of my solution set? No. What about if I test a 0, the absolute value of 0 minus 3, is that less than or equal to 4? Yes. So all of the stuff in between is my solution set. Instead of stressing about it as an inequality, create an equation. Find those what are called critical values and then just test around it to see where the solutions are. This is why I went over solutions heavily in the beginning, because if you understand what a solution is, it's easier to solve. Okay? And so notice my solutions in uh, interval notation would be negative 1 to 7. Okay? So... Yes, ma'am? You, you change what's on the right. Change it to a negative, right? No. Yes, but no. So change it to a negative? It's... So remember... The what's on the right is still a 4. Yeah, I'm saying the, you change it to a negative. No. Kind of. This is why it's important to understand what we're doing is, what's on the right is still a positive 4. See how I wrote it like this? But the absolute value of a negative 4 is positive 4. So what's on the inside? Notice how that negative 4 is taking the place of x minus 3? Yeah, so if that's a negative on the inside, you change it to a negative. No, it's kind of like telling them that it can be negative 4 or 4 because both are the same distance from the 0 since they both absolute Correct. values. Correct. So remember how the absolute value is kind of that distance from 0, right? So we all agree that the absolute value of 4 is 4, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see how that 4 is in the same exact spot as the x minus 3? Yeah. Then that means that x minus 3 can equal 4. And I would get the same solution. Okay. In a similar way, uh, and let's, let me just erase this, is the absolute value of negative 4 equal to 4? Mm -hmm. So you see how that negative 4 is taking the place of x minus 3? Mm -hmm. So then x minus 3 can also equal negative 4. Okay. Does that yeah. clarify that? Yeah. yeah. And that's why I say it's not quite, it, it is that whatever's on the right hand side, you do one positive and you do one negative, but it's not just that, it's the understanding that what's on the inside could have been a positive 4 or a negative 4. Does that clarify? And notice again, this is why we have to get the absolute value on its own, right? Because only what's on the inside can be positive or negative. We good with that? Okay. So, let's look at this second one here. Notice it changes on 2.3 a little bit. Now we are looking at the absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than 4, right? So what are some numbers on this number line that would be solutions to this inequality? 
Would 8 make that true? 8 minus 3 is? 5. Is absolute value 5 greater than or equal, or greater than 4? Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything else? Uh, nine. 9 would also do it. Right? It's even bigger, so yeah. Anything else? 10. 10. Anything else? Anything to the right of that? The eight. The eight. Or what? like seven point one and over. Okay, so seven point one would work. Because what's seven point one minus three? Three point nine. It's not three point nine. Four point one. Would that be as a value that is greater than four? Mm -hmm. What about if it's a seven point zero one? Yeah. And that would still be four point zero one, right? What if it's a seven point zero zero one? Yeah. So what am I getting really close to? Seven. So could I just put a put it at seven and just do an open point? Because yeah. is seven a solution? Yeah. So remember, absolute value of seven minus three needs to be greater than four. Yeah. Is that a true statement? Mm -hmm. Nope. So that's when we'd want an open point, right? That seven itself is not a solution, right? What about seven point five? Eight point one. So I need everything to the right. Is there anything else that might make this inequality true? Okay, maybe. So are there some negative numbers that are greater than 4? Remember, this is, is this much different than what we did here, less than or equal to 4? No? Could I translate this into an equation and find those endpoints? Yeah. Yeah? So the absolute value of x minus 3, that's not a 3, that's a 7. x minus 3 is equal to 4, right? So I'm going to create an equation out of this to find my endpoints. If I follow that work, what are the solutions for x? 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Negative 1. Negative 1. Negative 1. Notice we already tested to the right of 7, didn't we? Those were solutions. Um, we have a negative 1 here. I'm going to do an open point again because it's only greater than. So what about a 3? I'm going to check 3. Absolute value of 3 minus 3, is that greater than 4? Heck no, right? So is it stuff in between here? What about stuff to the left, though? Let's test that negative 2. Is that going to be a true statement? So is negative 2 a solution? So what would that lead us to believe about everything to the left? Those are not, well, they would make the inequality true, so they are solutions. Notice, if you can find those two endpoints, which you can do with the equation, just test around it. It's so much easier. We all good? Okay. Um, how would we write the interval notation for this? Mm -mm. What's the minimum value? Parentheses. Is it ever going to stop? Oh. It's an infinity. Which one? Negative infinity. Comma. Infinity. But, so. Let's talk about a couple things. One, if I put negative infinity to infinity, that's saying everything from here all the way to here are solutions. But that's not true. We're missing all of this. Does that make sense, Kajan? Okay. So where do I need to stop? You see how it stops at negative one? Right? And then we need the other side as well, so I need a separate interval for that. When you have more than one interval, what you're going to put is a u. It's called a union, just be aware it's a U. Um, and then what's the minimum on the other side? Seven. And what does it go up to? Positive ten. We all good with that? Do we need some practice within our small groups to get better with this? Yeah? Okay. Let's get to work on problem two, solving absolute value inequalities. I'll come by and check on you. Lexi, I'll start over there. Your what? I don't know where I'm at, so I don't know where I'm at. Okay, that is a problem. Let me come check on that. All right, so let's take about 15 to 20 minutes to work on these absolute value inequalities. We'll debrief. 
Um, what should be after this? And then we'll have some time to ask one more questions. Do you know where it went? The, this is the absolute value equations and inequalities that we were talking yesterday. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. That's what we did. So all I did um, is I hit the home button, and then when I went home, I was able to find it, and then I went back to current. I couldn't get, I couldn't find it either. Though. It was just this week. Yes, problem two. So it's one of those inequality stuff. So what are we thinking? There we go, right? So I want you all to focus on that idea. Change it to an equation. Find the smartest one. Right? Yeah. Let's do that. You are. Definitely not. Why does it always have like millions of things? Don't take it out of the absolute value yet. X plus eight. Is, yeah, yeah, I just got, I is equal to 3, then That's you can do that, x plus yeah. 8 would equal what? Like, I got a 7, but like, the yeah. answer is negative, three. negative, so I don't know. <laughs> like, oh, x plus 8 could also equal uh, positive 3. Have that. That's going to give you your endpoints. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's buy those. And so this is part of the reason why I've rushed a little bit through it's the just equations. Just you can get practice with the equations on this, too. Okay? So do we know what to do to get started here? Okay. So it's not necessarily wrong. One thing I would it's caution so though is instead of taking so it out right away, translate it into an equation first, which is what you did, but leave it inside the absolute value, and then do the positive and the negative. The reason why is if you look at, let's see a good example. Let's look at number 11 together, right? So if I look at the absolute value of x minus 3, minus 3 again is less than or equal to 4. Notice in this case, can I automatically split it up? No, because there's that minus 3 there. So that's why I would translate it to the equation right away, then solve it the way you know how to solve the equation, and then split it up with the absolute value. So does that make sense why I would wait so to do that? So start, with it, start with it as an equation and then start to look there. Make sure you identify your solutions on the number line and with the interval notation, okay? Are we feeling a little bit better about this? Better than yesterday? Okay. Make sure you're working with each other, talking with each other, helping each other figure it out. Yes, ma'am? That's fine. What is negative 5 plus 8? So remember, those values of x can be negative. It's when we take the absolute value that it has to become positive. But what that's going to tell me is, so you got negative 5 and negative what? What numbers have to be on the number line? Solution, right? So we would have a closed point here and a closed point here, right? Well, Both of those are making the equality true. Now we've got to find the, the, uh, the rest of the solutions. So what are we going to do? Test, right? Plug in. I'm going to test something to the right, I'm going to test something in the middle, and I'm going to test something to the left. Which of those regions are going to be solutions? Yes, sir. I just need you trying for now. Okay. Yeah, 
Value is on its own, what can we do? Negative. Plus three. So x plus 8 could be a positive 3. x plus 8 could be a. Right? Notice when you substituted, so x was equal to negative 5 here, when you substituted that negative 5 back in, you just got a 3. Technically, remember this would be the absolute value of that. And is 3 greater than or equal to 3? Well, yeah, we literally set it equal to 3, right? Don't make your life harder than it has to be. You already know it's going to be that. As long as you didn't make any mistakes, x equals negative 11. What numbers have to be on our number line? And? You need more than that. Oh, I'm sorry. I did. I'm just saying, what numbers do we know have to be there? Oh, 11, negative 11. Right. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to test around those points. Probably should all my twos. So, before I even get started, do you think they should be open or closed points? Why do you think they're closed? We can use them. How do we know? Notice how th uh, negative five was a solution to this inequality, right? And also, it says greater than or equal to. Now I just need to figure out where the rest of my solutions are. Negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 plus 8. Is that greater than or equal to 3? No. So probably nothing in the middle. What about to the right? Let's test that 0. Absolute value of 0 plus 8. Is that greater than or equal to 3? So is that a solution? So things to the right are probably solutions. Test something over here. There we go. Is that greater than or equal to 3? That will be 5, right? Done. That's it, right? Like, so notice, and that's the point. Like, instead of stressing about it, solving it as an inequality, because trust me, it's way harder to solve it as an inequality. Just solve it as an equation, find your points, and test around it. That's a skill that will carry you through pre-calculus and calculus. But it wouldn't matter if I did that. That way. No, I caution you heavily to do an equation first. For example, if I were to look at number 11, right? Absolute value of x minus 3 minus 4 is less than, or minus 3 is less than or equal to 4, right? Can I go ahead and split this up as it currently is? Why not? The absolute value is not by itself, right? So instead of trying to split it up here, I'm going to go ahead and make an equation, and I'm going to make sure I get the absolute value on its own. Does that make sense? So that's why I do the equation first, even from the get-go, so that now I know, okay, so the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to 7, right, because I added that 3. Now I can easily split it up. What would be the answer for the I mean, remember, this is one way to show it, right? It's every number from negative infinity up to negative 11 and then every number from negative 5 to infinity. Are you asking how would we do it in interval notation? Because that's one way you're going to represent all the solutions. So at negative, you said what? <laughs> so you see this arrow over here? Yes. So what's that going to keep going towards? Not infinity. Negative infinity. I just said negative. Oh, sorry. I missed the negative. That's my bad. Would it be a bracket or a parenthesis? Okay. Can't equal infinity. Negative 11. That's going to be a, a bracket. bracket. And then remember, I, I told you all earlier, just put a U there. It's called a union, but it puts those two things together. And then where is this one going to start? Negative 4. Nope. Negative 4. Yeah. Nothing. What's the minimum value? Negative mm 5. -hmm. With that bracket, comma, infinity. Right? So, can I remember, what I'm doing here is I'm showing every solution with that number line, right? Those arrows. I tested points to the left, 
points here made the inequality true. So all those points are going to make the inequality true. I only tested one point, but, and I guess one thing I should clarify is, these are known as critical values, okay? When it comes to these critical values, solutions are only going to be to the left, in between, or to the right, every single time. That's the reason why we're doing it this way. And then when I tested a number to the left, it made the inequality true. When I tested a number in the middle, it did not make the inequality true. And I tested a number to the right, and that made the inequality true. Does that make sense? Try applying that to a couple more. Write that down for notes for later. If you need to get a separate sheet of paper out, that wouldn't be a bad idea. There's always free paper up there. Um, I'll come back and check on this. Let's try to work some more. Yes, you can do marker if you want. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not cold, and if I turn it up any hotter, then I'm going to be really warm. Alright, how's it going? Um, I don't know what's supposed to be the answer. Okay, well. How are we supposed to represent our solutions? Because remember, it's an inequality. So how many solutions are there really going to be? It's just when it's really cold, I can see. Look, look at that number line. Like if I'm hot, I'll be uncomfortable. It's not just really cold, so I'm like, my eyes are getting sick. So think about the fact that it's negative 1, right? And then it was 0, and then it was 1. But wasn't also like a 0 0.5? What about 0 0.5? 1. 0 0.5? 1, 1? One? So if I keep breaking it down to all those decimals, how many numbers are there going to be? So, does so the people what do we need in order to represent equally many numbers? You can't just write all those numbers. You need a number line. That's what I'm saying. Is on the videos, like, they can skip what, like... Well, the infinity is not quite equal to the infinity. Like, what are the two ways of representing We're just sitting here. That person is probably just like... With number lines? That's called the interval notation. Peace. So one of the things that I want to point out, one, so when I look at yours, you only have negative 5 to infinity, right? So then you have negative 5 and you have negative 11. And you have the negative 5 and negative 11 too, right? Don't forget, before you split it up, and this matters for number 11, go ahead and take a second to make it an equation. Then you split it up once you have the number 5. Watch us struggle. And then... And so this is where you're getting x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 5. So what numbers have to be on the middle line? Yeah. That's not the thing. It's like the absolute value. I used to understand this and know I don't. Exactly. I'm like, I got it before we did it at the very beginning. So then negative 5? Yeah, usually it was like the first time we were like, and then negative 1 was not be equal to it, so it's a close point. But those are not as critical mm -hmm. It could be, and solutions could be to the left. They could be in oh between, God. or they could be to the right. We need to kind of figure out where they are. Did we test some numbers? Yeah. Yes, the original inequality. So that's why we create the number line instead of looking at the yeah. So let's try and negative. Absolutely negative H plus 8. Is that greater than or equal to 3? That's zero. Is that greater than equal to three? So should I be choosing numbers in here? So I'm not going to let any of those be my solutions. Let's test the number over here. As we value the negative 12 plus 8. Is that greater than equal to three? What's negative 12 plus 8? Stop, stop stressing about it. Use a calculator. Come on, what's negative? It's negative four. What's the other side? Negative four. Different from the fact that I thought it was equal to three. Like I've looked at the team and I'm like, it's greater than that. So it is a solution on the left side. Is that it? Okay. But I still need to test over here as well. As we value, I'm not always using zero when I have a chance. There's this girl in there who's like. Right here, you talk about math back there. We are, and then the number two x. <laughs> it's is a whole lie. You talking about some girl back there? You get to work on the math. I let it go when you were talking about how you once understood absolute value, and now you no know longer do. Okay, I focus on this math. <laughs> is that greater than equal to three? It's great. So we're going to That's find a brilliant talent, and I can't. So here are solutions. Can't write and here are solutions. But is that what you're representing with this? No, so you have the negative five to infinity. That's only part of it, though. 
I also have this sign. How am I going to represent this side? I have to make another. What's the minimum on this side? Three times. Negative infinity. What's the maximum? Yes. Okay, so you all have it, or it's like your period is so long to be doing that. Like, that's what I'm saying. My first period was like office assistant. I wouldn't have to go for hours. Sorry, we finished the work on the phone. Um, the parentheses are when you cannot equal that number. Brackets are when you can equal it. Can we equal that? Yeah. Check it. As a value of negative 11 plus 8, is that greater than or equal to 3? Let's all just do a random one. We're going to come back together and see what yes. we can. So can I equal it? And then you just need to put a U in between to indicate that they're going together. Okay? But that's why you have to test around them. It's not just going to be one section every time. Sometimes it will be. Does that make sense, though? Yeah. Let's keep working. Okay, from Let's get started. Put it right back through 10 and 11 to see if we need to do anything there. Okay. How's it going over here? Making progress with it? Okay, so look, 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 if we got x is greater than negative 2, so we know yeah. that negative 2 is so not greater, the, so we can't, we're going to open the circle that, that, okay? And then, and then, so here's the number line, and let's see, let's try 5 so, yeah. as a solution. Okay. So we're going to try 5 plus 2, 5, 6, eight. That is right. Okay, so we're going to assume everything oh, on this side is right. What about negative yeah, 3? Negative 3 plus uh, 2. The one thing I'll point out is, notice how you have close points on number 9? Does that mean they are or are not Is it 1? Negative 1. Okay, okay, so negative 3 is a solution. So we can circle and fill it in if we know the math. And then, well, so it can be, right? How about, but also, does that make the inequality? We'll see anything on this side would take with it because it's in an absolute value thing. So it could be negative 23, but it negative 11 plus 8. What is that? So anything this way, it just can't be negative 3. Is the absolute value of negative 3 greater than or equal to 3? Um, so those should basically be basically can't it be any answer. Then? So that means we also need a look zero plus two is greater than zero. We're saying negative one that plus negative two, negative is negative eight a plus two. We don't need that because the absolute value. That we can equal it. Can we just take the whole yeah. number home? Okay. Wouldn't that be infinity to infinity though? Not by his standards. No, I don't know. Go on in and grab seats. Get out your uh, absolute, absolutely. Um. So number nine. Yeah. Let's I want us to look at the end of the number 10 quickly. We have x minus the absolute value of 9. So I want to make sure we're all on the same level. We all have different answers. The absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 1. Don't forget to make it equal to first. So then x minus 2 equals what? Negative. x minus 2 is equal to positive. Look right here. You can see track of the two is actually making a zero. That's why he's doing this thing. What do I need to do when I'm subtracting two? Oh. Not change it, but I need to add two. Yeah, Jeremiah, what's negative two plus two? Okay. That's a zero. Does that make sense? And so that was getting you a little bit off. And that would give you one in points. X equal one. And X equal one. Remember, we're trying to create that. Oh, okay. Did I get back okay. right there? Alright, keep working. I'm testing that out. I'll, I'll be back to check on you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I just want you to check this before I know that it's right and I'm going to Okay. Sorry, When you have more than one interval, right, so keep it so a U. Yeah. yeah, so you would do negative infinity, comma, negative 11, U, negative 5 to infinity. We're saying that that's a union, you're putting it together. Okay? Don't forget, you're, only, you're solving as an equation and find your critical values, but you need to make the number line and figure out what the whole set of solutions are. Okay, so what's your next question? Okay. Uh, so, are the only solutions that inequality going to be between 1 and 3? Because remember, what this is really saying is we want 
every point. It's not that I can't so remember the just distance takes so much time from two is one. <laughs> right? Well, the highest that you could go is three, because that's one unit we can do, and then the lowest you could go is one. That's one unit we can do. So does that number, the, do those numbers make sense? Does that make, that's why I talked about it that way yesterday, so that we can really understand it. Notice right here with number 11, we get down to this point where we have absolute value of x minus 3 is less than or equal to 4. So I want every point such that it is less than 4 units away from 3. And like when we think about it that way after we finish solving it, right? So look at your 11 again. Are you finding points that are less than 4 units away from 3? A positive 3? Sorry, that's supposed to be a 7, isn't it? Sorry, I forgot you had three. Less than seven units away from a positive three. But then you're going further to the left, right? So are those points less than seven units away from a positive three? So. So like what you highlighted or um, shaded was this, right? Negative six. Is that less than seven units away from three? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, you did it in between. My bad. I missed. I didn't see the line above. Yeah, you're good then. Ignore me. My bad. I definitely thought you had it shaded to the left. I was like, how did you? Yeah, you're good. So yes, every point you have is less than seven units away. Awesome. Three. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stuck here. Okay. Well, so those are critical values, right? Yeah. Okay. So where are the solutions going to be? What did we do here? I did infinity stuff for the for this, but how did I figure out where the solutions were? The critical values, remember, is where things can change. So the solutions are either in between, they're to the left of the critical values, or they're to the right of the critical values. What's a number in between one and three? Two. How could we check to see if that's a solution to the original inequality? One has to be the biggest one. Put in X. Okay, so uh, the absolute value of 2 minus 2, is that less than or equal to 1? It's less than, that's a 0, right? So is that a solution? So shade it or put the line above it to show that those are solutions, right? Okay, so we've only tested in between, we still need to test to the left and to the right. What's the number to the left of 1? Negative one. Okay. So substitute a negative one in. What's the 